Testing, testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Well, what kind of cake? Uh, I think it's vanilla on top and then chocolate on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe just a carb of steak. Yeah. Ice cream. Ice cream. Really nice. Testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one two. Testing, testing one two. Testing one two. Testing one two. Testing one two. Testing one two, testing one two, testing one two, testing one two, testing one two.
testing. Testing, testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing. Okay. All right. What am I demoing? The dashboard. Okay, great. Um, so, welcome to demos. Um, so, you may have all seen the dashboard, those of you who are on staff and not sneaking away with your stuff. <laughs> um, although maybe the junior fellows haven't seen the dashboard. Anyway, the dashboard used to look cool. And then Otto ripped out Bootstrap. And then it looked less cool. <laughs> and now it looks cool again, but not for 16.04. OK, so a couple things I did recently. Um, Foundations is no longer hard coded to be four weeks. Uh, it starts looking weird again when Foundations is longer than five weeks. But for five weeks, it works fine. Um, so I rebuilt the tooltip, because uh, that was broken. And um, yes, so Bob, this is a bad example for, of a cohort. Let me use 1511. There we go. OK, 
this is what the dashboard looks like. Most students are collapsed. Uh, you can sort them, all that stuff. You can look at the details. Oh no, this person got put a one on their knowledge check-in on this day. Um, so I remade the tooltip recently, over the last couple days, I've been struggling with remaking the popover, which when you click it, it stays put and goes away only when you click outside it. Yeah, that's pretty great. I could have probably used a package for that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so it looks like this again. So it's back where it was <laughs> a month ago. <coughs> and that's what I've done. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So some of these rows are bar graphs. So it'll show you a scale. So. Oh, that's just how many they put in? Yeah, out of six. Because, I don't know. Um, yeah, Mark? I was going to ask. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. And break. <laughs>
but getting the backlog of videos up will take about, I don't know, four to six weeks, something like that. So that's it. Let me fix my display. All right. So something that I worked on a while back but hasn't been presented yet that I like a lot is the following state. Um, made it much more functional and pretty now than it was before. So. Sorry, this is actually on. I guess I can show you this. This is actually on um, the deployed site right now. And if you had multiple, I'm going to show you on um, the testing development just because I have multiple cohorts to show you. So you can go back and forth, tabbing in and out. It'll also have unassigned if any of them changed cohort or just never got assigned one for some reason. Um, in addition, the first one is always open just so you don't have to like take that extra click to get to the one that you probably are going to most of the time, the most recent cohort. That's a nice little touch. Yeah, because otherwise it'd be very annoying. Um, let's see. And also, I worked on the whole thing. I just redesigned this um, text box for, the, for giving reflections during workshops, so it you can't resize it anymore. It wasn't used to be going all off the screen and added just a few small styling, um, styling touches and then made sure it was um, the new styles were hooked up properly. And over here, if you are at Grace Hopper, now you have your own incident link as well that's specific to Grace Hopper and without a, using a controller this time. <laughs> so that was actually pretty cool to learn about how to do that without having a controller can, like, uh, directing where the link should be for which campus. All right, that's really all I have to show for uh, this demo. Yeah? Are you able to follow groups? Didn't we work on it a long time ago and never got? It's not merged. <laughs> and this isn't that ticket. This is more okay. of a how can we make it more convenient and more styling? Like this is when we first went over to the new system and it was completely all messed up. It, I don't think, the front would be easy to do with groups, like actually showing them the way it's doing it now, but our work actually isn't merged, I don't think. It was our hackathon. <laughs> our first hackathon. <laughs> I think I just turned my server off. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go over uh, two things that I did this, this week. Uh, I implemented infinite scroll for users, for the user management page. So 
before this, we were loading in however many users we had, or close to 1,000 users, I think. Uh, so now, what it does now is it loads in 10, and then 10 more, and it continues until you get to that 1,000 user mark. Uh, we have this in a couple different spots, and I implemented something that Z had already written. Uh, the user one was a little different because some of these information fields are just dynamically filled as we load the user in, and they're not actually on the user model. So that was a little difficult to circumvent. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. That should decrease load time significantly for the user management page. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, uh, For workshops, this was a request by some of the instructors. So when they're pairing, and I'm sure you guys all experience this, at least if you're a, fellow, or a student at one point, that you felt like you were pairing with the exact same person for every single workshop. So if you, when you go to generate pairs, it will display the number of times that each person has paired. And if it's over a certain threshold that we can easily change, uh, it will highlight them as in red. And then it should, you can drag and drop, right? so we can switch people around and it'll recalculate the times paired. So a, as an instructor, if I want to just manually change them, I can until I get something that's at least, this might not work exactly right. <laughs> but it's, it's getting there. It's, it hasn't been merged in. Um, yeah, so ideally, we're going to change the algorithm so this would all happen on the back end. But in the meantime, the instructor said that this would be useful. Especially in some cases, like when you just do this, some people have paired like six times. So the algorithm obviously needs, needs some work. Um, yeah, that's all I did. Quite, yeah. Um, would, it, uh, <laughs> um, would it maybe make sense to do it like a scaled maximum? So like the pairs that have the highest number of times paired are red all the time. So we know who's the actually the best person. Never mind. Right. <laughs> or maybe it should like be variable based on the number of workshops they've done so far. That's also Yeah. I I mean I was there's ways we could match the people. Yeah. Right? So like if you've already paired with someone, like your preference for them will go to the bottom. Yeah. And someday I'll do the top. Yeah. Someday. Okay. Any questions? Cool. Thanks.
All right. Sounds like it's on then. All right. So what I did, I'd say the coolest thing I did, which I'm going to present today, is uh, the featured videos box uh, for actions, which is a part of the workshop. So if we go to um, Game of Life, um, you know, this is one of the actions, right? So we can scroll through the actions, whatever. Um, but let's go and let's take an action. Right, so if we do, yeah, so you go down here, you edit it, and I have a handy YouTube video ID or URL stored here. Um, so if we want to add, you know, for JS data, I know is the one I remember is like, th there's that video lecture from the guy that started JS data. So this is like perfect for something like that. Um, then for that workshop, boom, it has a big video. It's huge. Look at that. Otter said he wanted it huge, so it is. So, you know, now here's like an hour of medieval music, I think. That's what it is. In case, you know, it's like the Avalon workshop, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, so it, just to emphasize, it's by action, so uh, you could ideally have like you know, 20 different videos here um, for a workshop um, for each action. Um, and that's what I did. It's one of the things I did. Hello. Oh. <laughs> so I worked on several smaller things, but the, the coolest thing, I guess, would be the Omni Search, which I worked on with several other people. Um, Dan started it off, and then Otter said, make these changes, and then I made those changes. So this is what is the result of that. Um, when you search for, f say, like a workshop, um, you'll see that there's an icon to the left of it and created that, so that's pretty fun. Um, and then as you scroll, um, or if you hover, uh, the text turns blue. And then if you search for, say, a cohort, um, there's a little icon for cohorts. And then if you search for a person, whoops. OK, there's a lot of Michaels, so. Um, it'll show the avatar instead of any icon. So um, there's that. And then if you wanted to open this in a new tab, you can command click. Or you can, oh, did I click that wrong? I think I did that too. But um, yeah, you can, you can right click and then open a new tab. Um, and it just has regular link functionality now versus, and it didn't before. So yeah, that's what I had to share for today's demo. <laughs> Check, mic check. <laughs> <laughs> You're right.
All right, so I'm going to show you guys two super quick things. Um, one was a bug fix. I guess uh, Nick Ellisworth, I can't pronounce the last name, he made like a nice little service to update the window, the t yeah, the window title, uh, depending on your page. Uh, but there was a bu bug in it. Like if you go to one, it was set up for office hours. Um, when you like go away. <coughs> oh, it already got merged, but it would stay on uh, office hours, no matter like how many tabs you have open, it'll all be the same. Uh, so, yeah, I just fixed that bug, so now we can support naming all of our pages. So if you like a lot of tabs, you can know which, which tab to which. Um, secondly, uh, so this started out as just like a gnarly bug in Safari, uh, where it's just like the styling would just completely break if a uh, comment's too long. Uh, while I was doing that, Otter just told me to like, yeah, while you do it, just go in there and just make it responsive. Uh, so uh, I'll do it myself. So now it uh, looks like a bit nicer on mobile. Um, the little sub nav collapses into a little drop down. And just everything's a nice little column. So yeah, we are getting, getting there for mobile. And yeah, that's about it. Hey, okay, cool, hi, I'm Tom. Um, so I've got two, um, okay, everybody, cool, okay. So I've got two things to show that I did um, the past um, two weeks now. So the um, cohort manager is now um, up and running. Uh, all the credit for the styling uh, goes to Otter, but I made it work. So let's say I want to add Jordan to 1501 for some reason, um, I can do that. I can also make it his primary cohort if he wants to go back in time. Um, and you can see that changes off here in the, the student profile as well. If I get rid of this, then it will automatically make uh, the remaining cohort the primary cohort. And if I remove the primary cohort, then he will move to a status of unassigned. So let's put him back at 1601. And the very first one that you add is automatically the primary cohort. So that's much better than what we had before. Um, also, uh, Meanwhile, in a uh, help queue land, uh, before um, some sockets weren't integrated, but uh, now everything in uh, the help queue updates via sockets, and adding and removing, so that's good. I need to make sure I haven't broken it. Um, also, currently, uh, because currently um, I'm working on an all cohorts view, which is, in co which is in code review, that shows all help tickets for all cohorts. So normally we can just view tickets from one cohort um, so if I want to see all cohorts and I see a list of all help tickets broken down by uh, the cohort name. So if I log in as um, Tom Sharon and uh, write a help ticket, uh, then I can see that it uh, shows up and is visually different um, from uh, ones from the other cohort. And from there, I can uh, navigate between that and the all cohorts view or I can take the ticket and uh, resolve it as normal. And I'm returned to that view with the ticket gone. And that's about it. This picture? Yeah. Oh, that none. Hell no. <laughs> okay, so I did a few small things. Uh, I'm going to show you two of them at the same time. Um, so one of them is the fact that before, uh, a couple weeks ago, there was no, from the pairs, 
page on the student, there was no way to jump to actually see like the page for the pair. You can just see the student in a list of other pairs. Like these links, for example, just go to another student. Um, but these links now that I created will go to the pair. Um, and in addition to that, before you cannot like all these, all the links that were associated with the JS data resources could not be uh, opened in new tabs. They were all state.goes, but now across all of Learn. Uh, we can open stuff in new tabs. So that was a nice little whirlwind tour of all of Learn. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, if you guys find places where that isn't true, like you can't right click on links, I guess just let me know because I probably missed some. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to show you. Cool. Oops. Um. Cool. So this is what the check-in page, cohort check-in page, looks like right now. Um, and <laughs> this is what it now looks like under my new direction. <laughs> You can ask for a specific date. Wow. Uh, you can toggle between dates. Uh, you can filter by name, Antonio. Um, and they're also sorted automatically from low to high. And any score below three is in red. Yeah, what is that sorted by? Uh, just the sum of their uh, feedback. I think this is the seed database. Because yeah, uh, their comments are. November you were in, yeah, this is November. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think. Uh, yeah. Now you have no way of knowing if we randomize this data or not. Yeah. Just saying. Maybe you also never graduated. And once. Popovers are fixed. <laughs> this will work. They're even more broken than they were before, I think, now. Um, so you can't see the comments right now. Um, so any suggestions on that front would be appreciated. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Last one is from Sam, who couldn't be here, but he made a video for us. here is this little Slack plugin, um, which is added to a few different uh, Mongo objects when they're created. Um, and these various um, hooks would uh, kick in uh, before each save, check if it was a new object, and if it was, um, immediately make a new Slack chat. Um, Slack. Um, so what we have here is this little Slack plugin, um, which is added to a few different uh, Mongo objects when they're created. Um, and these various um, hooks would uh, kick in uh, before each save, check if it was a new object, and if it was, um, immediately make a new Slack channel. 
Um, so for cohorts, we actually didn't want this to work quite like that. Um, so I had this little uh, flag here for, for hooks. Um, if that is false, the first save doesn't happen, the, the channel is never created. Um, and so we can uh, optionally <coughs> uh, choose to create a slack channel whenever. Um, and so ultimately, in the end, the way that it looks is we have a new integrations little tab. Um, we can click connect slack. And when you do, a new Slack channel is created and, and attached to this cohort. Uh, disconnect, and it removes it. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Cool. That's it. Nice demos, everybody. Very good.